Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and today we're going to take a look at the Heat Distortion plugin by Video Copilot. Now, this plugin is available inside of the Flight Kit product, and uh, let's go and take a look at how it works. Now, there's a few ways to create heat distortion inside of After Effects, but usually it requires a lot of pre-composing and creating noise and, you know, just doing a lot of work. Now, a simple alternative is to use the Distort Turbulent Displace, which is pretty cool. It gives you kind of a nice, you know, wobbly kind of effect, but there's a few problems with this method. So, for example, let's say I wanted to isolate the distortion to just the jet area. Well, what I could do is I could duplicate the layer and delete the turbulent displace and maybe create a mask, right? So here we've got the displacement, but the problem is I start to see this edge. I can start to see where the mask fades over between the non-distorted version and the distorted version. So it's really not a good alternative. So instead, we decided to create our own heat distortion plugin. And of course, you know, we had to make it good. So here we have the Video Copilot Heat Distortion. Drop that on our footage. And right away we can see a completely different look. And you'll notice there's this cool kind of heat signature along with the distortion. So our plugin makes up two kind of key components. You've got the distortion amount, but you've also got this heat signature amount. So this is what gives it kind of that diffusion look that you see sometimes along with a heat signature. So the nice thing is you have control over both settings. You can control the intensity of the distortion or the intensity of this blur heat effect. The other thing you'll notice is that it self animates. So it automatically animates uh, without having to do anything. And you can control the speed using the noise speed here and speed it up, slow it down. We've also got control over the heat bias. So what this does is blends between the distortion and the heat or the blur effect. So if we turn the bias down, it's going to make more blur essentially. So now if we look at this, it's kind of this really cool like smoldering looking title. And of course you can fade these out to, you know, have the title come into play like you saw in the teaser. So let's just take a quick look here. So that's pretty insane and I'm kind of overdoing it so that we can see it for this tutorial. But it's very cool. We could turn up the size of the noise and you can really start to see this, you know, looking through this like heated smoke effect is very cool. Another thing you can use this effect for is like an underwater type of effect. So like while you're looking through the water, it kind of creates some of these blurred out moments. Uh, but most importantly, you'll notice we're not doing any ghosting. All of our blurs are happening dynamically. So you can see that they fade into the blur. We're not actually masking anything out. All right, so this is really cool, but let me show you what sets this plugin apart. So let's come over here to this other example. We've got this F-35 doing a vertical landing or takeoff here. And I want to add some heat distortion to this afterburner. So we'll come over here, add the heat distortion effect. And just for the sake of this, I want to turn up the distortion amount and bring the scale down. Okay. Now, I want to isolate this effect to just the afterburner. So what I can do is right on the single layer, so you can pre-compose your comp or whatever, and I'm going to take a mask, and I'm simply going to draw a shape around the area that I want. Now, here's the cool part. I'm going to hit F and feather out the mask here. So what you can see here is that instead of fading in between the layers, it's actually distorting in between the effect. So the mask is actually controlling the intensity of the heat distortion. So I don't know if this is apparent, but you can actually see that it's changing the intensity of the distortion. So I can feather this out so that it kind of blends in nicely. I can even add other areas. So I could say add underneath this uh, area, add another bit of distortion. So we have sort of two areas that are being displaced and you know let's turn the size down a bit maybe turn that heat amount up maybe turn up the noise size so you can see here we're creating a really cool effect now 
I'm trying to play around with making it visible to you and also making it look good, but I would probably want to bring the size of the noise down, maybe not have as much distortion, just kind of have like a more subtle effect. But it may be hard to see over the screen capture, so I want to make sure you're able to see it. So another important thing in this case is let's say I want to add some wind. So I want to kind of mimic the direction of this blast. Well, what we can do is control the wind speed. So if we turn this up, point the direction kind of downward, and we can turn up the speed. So you can see that the noise is pushing away from the afterburner. So maybe we'll turn it up to like five. Maybe even more. And we'll make the size of the noise a little bit bigger. Again, I'm just making it a little bigger so you can see it. Let's take a look. So pretty cool. You can actually kind of get a sense that the heat is pushing away from the afterburner. So very cool. You can, you know, you can control the intensity of the distortion and, you know, you have other control over the noise, the complexity, you know, make it a little bit more dynamic. Uh, the other thing you notice here is we have different noise patterns. So we have our fire, we have kind of a more smoky uh, look depending on uh, what kind of shot you're working on. And there's also like an incendiary one which is very, you know, fiery. And this one's actually more realistic if you look at some real um, heat distortion signatures. Um, but sometimes, you know, for visual effects in movies you just want it to look cool. So, you know, just depending on what you're looking for. And then you can also control what you render. So you can render just the displacement or just the heat. And you can even see the noise pattern that's being generated uh, as well. In addition to the wind, you can also turn up the noise speed. So the noise speed is actually going to make it more, you know, turbulent essentially as it animates out of the, uh, out of the exhaust. So needless to say, uh, we put a lot of time into this heat distortion plugin because we want it to be really cool. And of course, we want it to be fast and easy. So when you can just move a mask around the area you want to have distorted and not have to worry about pre-composing and doing a lot of madness, uh, I got to say, that's always useful, uh, especially for me. All right, guys, thanks for watching. My name is Andrew Kramer, and we'll see you next time.